As you all know, Lauren Boebert decided to desert the people that she's currently representing in Colorado's 3rd Congressional District in favor of running in the 4th, which is a much safer district for a Republican to be in who doesn't have to worry about upcoming Democrats in general elections because the Republican always wins here. Now, this decision obviously was fueled by fears that she'd lose her upcoming general election to the Democrat, but the problem with this decision is that she now has to start from scratch and compete in a GOP primary and win in order to go back to Congress. Now, she probably expected to be coordinated by voters in the 4th District since she's kind of a superstar in the MAGA world, but that hasn't necessarily been the reception that she's received thus far. In fact, she finished in 5th place in the first straw poll after that first debate that she participated in, and a lot of Republican voters are going on the record saying how much they despise Lauren Boebert, which is a pretty bad sign. Now, one thing in particular that has kind of been a sticking point for people in this district who are even evangelical is uh, the Beetlejuice incident. If you couldn't already guess, Brad Reed of Ross Story reports, Boebert is facing major skepticism from residents in her new district, despite the fact that it's even more conservative politically than the district she previously served. At issue is the nonstop controversy that swirls around Boebert, most notably the notorious incident in which she was ejected from a musical in Denver while being caught on camera, vaping in the theater and groping her date. Yeah, so I understand why a self-interest that politician would want to be in a safer district. But the problem is when you have so much baggage and that much name recognition, I mean, name recognition is good in politics, but sometimes it could be bad, right? Especially when voters in this district have other options. Now, just to kind of show you what we're talking about here, here's a couple of direct quotes from the Wall Street Journal quoted by Ross Story because Wall Street Journal is paywalled. So I'm going to give you this version so that way you can actually see what they said. But anyways, a retired university employee said this about Boebert, quote, I don't appreciate as a Christian people saying they're Christian to get your vote and then turning out to be a low life." she explained to the Wall Street Journal. And now I just kind of think of her as a low life. Damn. Quote, I will not vote for her, period, another voter told the Wall Street Journal. She's not one of us. GOP voter Tammy Fleming, meanwhile, told the Wall Street Journal that Boebert has, quote, not been well received by Republicans due to the shenanigans and the drama and moving districts. I find these quotes hilarious. Now, keep in mind that this is only anecdotal evidence, and aside from one unscientific straw poll, we really don't have any data to actually determine where she's at. So even though these quotes grab headlines and they become sensationalized, we don't actually know if these anti bobert Republicans are representative of the rest of the district. That's yet to be seen. However, it's not unreasonable to assume that this sentiment is pervasive throughout the district for the fact that Republican leadership at this level in this district is very, very persuasive, and they're negative towards Boebert. In fact, some of them are running against her, which is kind of fueling this division. But this district overall is described as hyper-local by the Independent, where they put more stock into what local Republican leaders say compared to the Republicans in Washington. Now, part of that is because this is a very rural district, and more importantly, as the Independent reports, quote, many still don't have computers in Lyman, about halfway between Denver and the Kansas border, and fiber optic internet remains a work in progress. So we're not dealing with your average voter here. And remember, this is Ken Buck's old district who isn't necessarily a MAGA Republican. So that Trumpian brand might actually turn off some voters in this particular district who don't really care for that type of loud politics that Trump brings. They just care about, you know, evangelicism and traditional conservatism. And, you know, as much as MAGA Republicanism and fascism has kind of taken over the party, it's hard to tell whether or not voters in this district are going to be receptive to that brand of Republican Party politics. Now, aside from that, her antics have certainly turned some people off, and they are very quick to point that out. Here's some more quotes courtesy of The Independent. Quote, I won't vote for her because of who she is and what she has done. Randy Wallace, an unaffiliated voter, tells The Independent from behind the counter of his antique store in Elizabeth, 216 miles from the town where Bobert raised her boys. Quote, first thing that came to mind was carpetbagger, 100% 
percent. She's a carpetbagger. State Representative Richard Holtorf tells The Independent. He introduces himself as the most qualified and the best candidate and the rowdiest, most raucous of all. I don't mince words. I'm a cowboy and cattleman, and I shoot straight, walk straight, and talk straight. This is incredibly cringe to me. Uh, quote, the next thing that came to mind is she's a deserter. She's deserting her people out of political expediency, Holtorf says. One place Bobert certainly didn't seem to have name recognition was Lyman, where the local newspaper refrains from printing political news and where residents look askance at anyone doing anything, quote, outrageous, according to Catherine Thurston, the business manager of the Lyman leader and a native of the town. People around here used to make a deal on a handshake, Thurston tells The Independent. Quote, if you're not going to spend time talking face to face with people out here, you're probably not going to get the vote. So I would like to know the average age of people within this district because because I think that could be part of the problem because based on the things that they're saying, like the euphemisms that they use, it leads me to believe that this is a very old district where they're literally saying things like back in my day, you know, we used to, we used to make deals based on a handshake and, and candy bars used to be five cents. Like, I, I don't know exactly if that's true, but like, Maybe the opposition is coming from older voters, although you would suspect that they're more conservative. Maybe they don't just like this new brand of conservatism. I'm not really sure, but I do find all of this very funny. Now, to be fair, there were people in the article saying, I actually like her. I plan to vote for her. But it's really interesting to see this much resistance to her, even if it's just anecdotal evidence from the Republican Party, because, you know, you would think by this point in time that MAGA Republicanism has kind of infiltrated all sectors of the Republican base, you know, throughout the country, but it doesn't necessarily seem like that's the case. Now, Holtorf, her primary opponent, quoted in the article who described himself as a cowboy who's straight talking, rooting, shooting. Uh, so he explains that he actually used to be a supporter of hers until she started doing very disrespectful things. Hmm. I wonder what he could be talking about there. Now, listen, I don't know if he would be defending her if he wasn't running against her. Obviously, he has a political reason to say all of a sudden he's against her. But, you know, I wonder if that would have affected him really if he wasn't running against her. But certainly now he's going to weaponize that issue against her. And look, he should. Now, I don't agree with any of these people politically, but I think that their ostensible consistency when it comes to family values, at least, and social conservatism is commendable in the sense that they do appear to be consistent. Now, of course, they probably don't have that same standard when it comes to Trump. But to be fair, I'm not necessarily sure if these same people would vote for Trump in a GOP primary because it hasn't happened in Colorado yet. So we'll have to wait and see. But I mean, here's what I'm going to leave you with here. Temper your expectations because... Even though she has a lot of negative name recognition here, name recognition still does go a long way. And even if somebody doesn't necessarily like her, they could vote for her simply because it's a name that they recognize. But if they're not super invested in national politics, who knows, you know, but she could still win. That's the point that I want to make. But I have to admit that even if, you know, she does win this and I have no idea what's going to happen at this point in time. I do find it a little bit shocking to see how much resistance that she's facing from fellow Republicans. And I find it hilarious because you would think that a Republican running in a GOP primary in, open, in an open seat where she's already an incumbent in, in Congress would be a no-brainer, right? But maybe not. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm really, really interested in seeing the results of this because I don't know how it's going to go. But if she lost, it would be completely hilarious. Vagina. <laughs> 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 <laughs>